We already learned how to find the zeros when uh, polynomials are already factored. Basically what we're doing is we're setting each of the factors equal to zero and solving them. So if you remember, we would get negative two and over here x minus three equals zero. We would get positive three. We basically skip that work step and just jump to immediately flipping the signs. So one zero would be positive five and one zero would be negative 12. What does that mean to have zeros there? Remember zeros are where the graph crosses the x-axis and so example B would cross at positive five, one, two, three, four, five, and negative 12, so like way back here. Um, x times x would, would x times x would be x squared, and x squareds have the shape of parabolas. So that would be a rough sketch of what that graph would look like. You could plug that into y equals on your calculator to confirm it. When we look at c, it's a little bit different because we have three factors. This x out front that gets set equal to zero, and then there's nothing to solve, so one of the zeros is at zero. The other zero would be positive four, and the other one would be at negative 10. So this one isn't a quadratic, it's not gonna be a parabola. This one has three of them, it's gonna be a cubic function. So if you were to imagine the graph of that, it would cross through negative 10, let's say that's negative 10, zero, and four, and it might look something like that. That's the cubic function shape. Anytime directions tell you to factor anything, the first thing you should always do, your number one step, is to look for a greatest common factor. That's what you should always try to pull out first. So when we look at A, we look at the greatest common factor of 2x squared and 10x. In other words, what can we divide both of those by? We can divide both of them by 2. And if the first one has 2x's and the second one has 1x, then they would both have just 1x that would match up. So we'll divide both of them by 2x. So we'll put the GCF right here, and then we need to write the other factor that it's multiplied by to get the original problem. So what do you multiply 2x by to get 2x squared? x. In other words, what's 2x squared divided by 2x? Just x. And then we figure out what is 10x divided by 2x? Well, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and the x's cancel out. So each of the factors for this or 2x and x plus 5, which means each of the zeros would be x equals 0 and x equals negative 5. Some kids like to think that the uh, 0 for that might be negative 2, but you have to remember that the step we're kind of skipping is that 2x equals 0, and if you were to solve that for x, you would divide by 0 on both sides, I mean, you would divide by 2 on both sides, and 0 divided by 2 is 0. So that's how we get 0 for that first one. When you try to find the greatest common factor of 3y squared and 12y, you can divide both of them by 3 and 1y. So your GCF is 3y, and the factors that's left over will be y, and then negative 12 divided by 3 is minus 4. When you set each of those equal to zero, you'll get y equals zero and y equals four. When we have three terms to get a greatest common factor from, we have to make sure it divides into all three of them. So all three of these can be divided by three and they all have a y to be divided by. So we write the three y out front and we write the leftovers inside parentheses. 30 divided by 3 is 10. y to the third divided by y to the first is y to the second. Negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3. And y squared over y to the first is y. And plus 3 over 3, that will give us plus 1, and the y's cancel out. 
and that's as far as we'll take that one because we haven't learned how to factor things like this yet and it's actually not going to be one that you could do any further anyway. On this last one there's one trick and that's why it's on here and that is if you have a negative number that's very first, that's the leading coefficient, you always get rid of it first. So the GCF is 3, but we're going to divide all of these by a negative 3. So when we do that, we'll have our GCF out front, and now we'll write the leftovers. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is positive 1x to the 5th. Negative 9 divided by negative 3 is positive 3x to the 4th. And last, we'll have minus 1. Alright, next, anytime you see a trinomial in standard form like this, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, we'll find the factors of a times c that add or subtract to get b. You'll know if you're going to add or subtract by the sign in front of the c. So let me show you what I mean. In letter a, the a is 1, because there's no number in front of the x squared, and c is 24, so 1 times 24 is 24. So we'll find the factors of 24 that add up, because that's a plus sign, to positive 10. If you look at the factor sheet I gave you, all the factors of 24 are these. So we just look through until we see two of them that would add up to get 10, and 4 and 6 will do the trick. So we know we have two factors because it's x squared so we'll have x and x and since it's 4 plus 6 plus 4 and plus 6 are the two factors. If we were to take it one step further to find the zeros, our zeros would be negative 4 and negative 6. If we tried the next one we'd find the factors of 1 times 18 so the factors of 18, and you can look at your sheet or you can jot them down real quick. This time we want them to add up to positive 11. And it looks like 2 and 9 will do that. So we have two factors. x and x will give us our x squared. And since it's positive 2 and positive 9, that will give us positive 11. We put those inside the parentheses. And the zeros will be negative 2 and negative 9. On example B, we're going to find the factors of 1 times 15. So factors of 15, there's only two of them, 3 and 5, that subtract to get positive 2. So if we used 3 minus 5, that would equal negative 2. So we're not going to use that. We're going to use 5 minus 3. We just flip-flop them. 5 minus 3 is positive 2, so that's what we'll use. So we have our two x's inside the parentheses, x and x, and the 5 is positive, and the 3 is negative. So the two zeros are negative 5 and positive 3. Last, we're going to find the factors of 1 times 24. So the factors of 24, we could actually use that list up there. And this time they're going to subtract to equal negative 2. So we have x and x. And which two subtract to give us negative 2? Well, it's going to be 4 and 6, but let's think about it. Will it be 4 minus 6? Does that equal negative 2? Yes, it does. So the 4 is positive, the 6 is negative, and the two zeros are negative 4 and positive 6. To factor these problems, we still find the factors of a times c, so 1 times 16, that subtract to get, oh, there's nothing in the middle. We're missing that middle bx term. We have the ax squared, and we have the c term, but we don't have that middle one, so it must have meant that it canceled out to 0. So the factors of 16 that do that would be 4 and 4. So we'll have x plus 4 and x minus 4. That's it. Over here, we'd have x plus 5 
and x minus 5. These are perfect squares, which means we're basically taking the square root of the first and second number. So here, the square root of 4x to the fourth is 2x squared, and the square root of 49 is 7. So this is 2x squared plus 7, and 2x squared minus 7. Over here, the square root of 100 is 10, and the square root of x to the sixth is x to the third, and the square root of 64 is 8. So it's 10x to the third minus 8, and 10x to the third plus 8. For these last examples, we're going to look for a greatest common factor first, and then we'll keep factoring it after that. So when we look at a, we can divide each of these terms by 2, so we'll factor out the 2, and we'll be left with x squared plus 10x plus 24. If you remember, that's the same thing as we factored earlier. We had x and x, and the factors of 24 that add up to 10 were 6 and 4. So we still only have two zeros here, and they are x equals negative 6 and x equals negative 4. In example B, we will factor out a 4x squared from each term. When we do that, we'll have the 4x squared out front, and on the inside, we will have 1x squared, negative 1x, and minus 4. Next, we'll have to keep factoring. Out front, we'll have 4x squared equals 0. And when we divide both sides by 4, we get x squared equals 0. And the square root of 0 is just 0. So we have what's called a double root at x equals 0. Then we'll keep factoring this. We'll have two factors, one uh, with x in each of them, and we're trying to find the factors of 4 that subtract to get negative 1. If you think about it, the only factors of 4 are 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. If we subtract any of those, we're not going to get 3. Excuse you, Lindy. So, we say that this is not factorable anymore, at least by hand, and so this right here would be the final answer. Last example. We will find the GCF. It looks like it's 2x, so we'll divide each of these by 2x and write the leftovers. So 2x to the third divided by x is x squared. This will give us negative x in here will have negative 6. So, we are going to find the factors of 6 that subtract to give us negative 1. So the factors of 6 are 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. If we use 2 and 3, and if we do 3 first minus 2, that will get us positive 1. We want negative 1, so let's flip-flop it. 2 minus 3 is negative 1, so we'll use that. So we'll have the 2x out front, and we'll write our two factors, each with an x inside. The 2 is, needs to be positive, and the 3 needs to be negative. So for this, we will have a 0 at 0, negative 2, and positive 3. 